and uh, this is going to be a fun day. This is going to be a fun hour. Um, we're doing something completely different than we've done before, and I'm very excited about it. So let's get started. Welcome, and as usual, good afternoon, everyone. As most of you know, my name is Danny Schultz, and on behalf of the Westchester Jewish Council and the Jewish Education Project, I am honored to be introducing today's event, which is part of our WJC very successful monthly Israel Connection series. Uh, as most of you know, and for those of you who don't, the WJC is an umbrella organization. We represent over 130 Jewish groups, institutions, schools, synagogues in Westchester, which is the eighth largest Jewish community in the United States, totaling over 150,000 citizens. Today's event, sponsored by WJC, uh, is one that, as I said, I'm very excited about. I'm a proud board member of WJC. I'm chair of our Israel Affairs Committee, and uh, I love doing this Israel Connection series precisely uh, because of the kind of uh, talk we're going to have today. So today's talk is going to focus, as you can tell, on Israeli music. Uh, as I said, we're trying something a little new and different. So we're going to go on a little listening tour of Israeli culture through its music. Music, of course, in Israel and in any country is a central part of culture and integral to building national identity. And our tour today is being led by the wonderful Abby Pitkowski. Together, we're going to explore samples of music that offer insights into Israel's vibrant contemporary culture and how artists use their music to address, at times, some very important topics and events. A word on Abby before I start our chat uh, together. Abby is the director of Israel education at the Jewish Education Project. She began her career in Jewish education in both formal and informal frameworks in the New York area. Shortly after, she fulfilled a lifelong dream and made Aliyah with her husband, where they had, li they had lived for nine years. And then while in Israel, Abby worked for the American Joint Distribution Committee, serving Jewish communities overseas, primarily in Eastern and Central Europe and the former Soviet Union. After returning to the U.S., Abby shifted her professional focus to her New York Jewish community, and she's currently the director of the Westchester region and of Israel education for the JEP, which we could spend a whole another session on, and maybe we will. Today, Abby lives in Riverdale, New York, with her husband, Michael, and has two newly adult children, Roni and Noah, if I got that right. So as usual, please use your chat window on Zoom to let us know if you have any questions. We wanna try and make this interactive at the end because this is a, uh, a multimedia presentation. I'll do my best to air as many questions as I can, but we have a lot of ground to cover. So Abby, I'm going to uh, kick things off and maybe you could just um, tell us I don't know, what's, who's your favorite Israeli musician? What's your favorite, do you have a favorite Israeli song? Oh, yeah, and was, that's and, and the last piece of that, what was the inspiration for kind of how we've teased out today's session? Could we spend a lot of time? Oh, that's great. Danny, and thank you so much for the introduction and for sharing. And I, I, I think, Danny, it's also, I just want to share that you mentioned my, uh, you know, my first, my foray into Jewish education. Fun fact for this group that my first full-time job in Jewish education was in Westchester County. Um, it was at the, what was Schechter, which is now the LaFell School. So I think that's an important fun fact for this group. That sure. my, my first full-time work was actually in Westchester County. And I'm in Riverdale right now. I saw in the chat, this is just a fun virtual background. It's aspirational. I'm not at the Aroma Cafe. You could see the background, but I wish I was there. So that's just there. Um, so Danny, my favorite art. So I, I love Israeli music um, and, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'm going to tell you why, but um, I think Arik Einstein is one of my favorite artists. He just is, um, he just has such a broad array of music and we're going to look at one of his songs a little bit later. And I don't know if it's a little bit geeky, but you know, one of the reasons I love uh, Israeli music, it kind of, it really speaks to me as a Jewish educator. You know, to think about Israeli music that is written and performed in Hebrew. You know, like when we think about what makes us a Jewish people, there are a few different items and language is one of them. And when I hear, you know, Israeli song, it just, it makes me think like, this is what Eliezer Ben Yehuda thought of when he helped, you know, bring Hebrew back from a language that was just used like in prayer settings or just used 
you know, in, uh, in study, like to be a live, you know, bold language. Um, it's what Herzl envisioned when he thought about like Israel just being a regular normal state. And when I hear, you know, Israeli music, that's what it is. Like some of it is just like, you know, fun tunes that you just kind of hum along and some of it are really, some of it's super deep and, and meaningful and touches on history, et cetera. But it just all, you know, sheds a, um, like a really big mark. It just underscores like that we're a Jewish people. We have our own music and our own language. True, true. Very well said. So I'm going to uh, just make sure everybody knows a couple of other things. Um, one is Abby and I found that this could be, not, not only could this be a one semester course, this could be, not only could be a two semester course, I'm going to say this could be like a four year major. There's so much to cover. Uh, that's number one. And, you know, we don't have enough time to cover, you know, everybody. So, you, you know, we can't cover Brose and Hanoch and Chaz and Damari and Shimmer and Pick and Einstein and Gov and Artsy, et cetera, et cetera, let alone the fantastic Israel Philharmonic. But I'm going to stop there. I'm going to turn it over to you um, and take us away. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Exactly. Thanks for just mentioning that. Yeah, Danny and I were just marveling. Oh, my goodness, we could do a whole session a whole semester session just on women or just on Mizrahim or just on, you know, a certain decade. Like it, it, it seems kind of crazy and, and overly ambitious, right? In 55 minutes, but we're, we're it's, a, it's a great snapshot. We're gonna do a recording and who knows, Danny, maybe there'll be part two and three and four, right? We'll, we'll see, sure. we'll see how that goes. Okay, great. So um, thank you in advance to my colleagues and friends at the Westchester Jewish Council who are helping me. We have a number of different pieces of tech um, some, a piece was sent to everybody earlier today. If you did not get it, or if you didn't have time to open it, that's fine. We will share it. Um, it has, we're going to be looking at some lyrics. We're going to be looking at performers, lyrics, context of different songs that help give an insight into whether it's events or issues or really identity into Israeli culture. So, uh, Lori, I'm going to ask you if you could start our PowerPoint. Terrific. Okay. So the, don't worry about the Hebrew, that got kind of whatever, but you already have a word about me. It was a, a nice little introduction. So Lori next. So I'm just going to, I would love to just know, you know, who are in, who is in the, the uh, who's, who's joining us today. Um, so please, I would love to just share in the chat one thing, Lori, if you could go. Yeah. Share in the chat. One more click, Lori. There you go. We'd love to just see what's one of your favorite places in Israel. Maybe it's a place you've lived, a place you've visited, a place you've always heard about. Oh, great. Tel Aviv and, oh, these are all great places. You know, it's supposed to snow in Jerusalem. Let's see. So beach, it's good to hear. Yeah. All right. Everyone has a favorite place. That's amazing. Okay. Oh, we have family. We have cantors there. That's great. Love it. Okay. All right. So. Yep, thinking about oh, all the different places you love in Israel. Hopefully we will all get there soon. We would love to meet in person ourselves and when can we get to Israel? Okay, so Lori, one other item that we're gonna click on our PowerPoint, please also share in the chat. Do you have a favorite Israeli song or is there an artist? I know it's really hard to pick. Danny, right after I said Arik Einstein, then I thought to myself, oh, but what about Ahud Banai? Oh my God, what about Rita? Oh my goodness, what about, what about, what about? Right, so it's really hard, so anyone, just think of, is there me. one song? Right, Danny, it's really hard to select one. Okay, oh, a song. Oh, Shlomo Artsy, yeah. Oh, Ari, great to see you. Ari and I went to college together. So nice to see you, Ari. Okay. Oh, great artists that are coming up here. Okay, excellent. I wanna see yeah. if anyone puts in Mandy Patinkin. <laughs> okay, Oof goes out, right. That was a typo, right. Thanks, Lisa, that's Oof goes out, right. Okay. Oh yeah, we'll see what he goes. That's amazing. Okay. Terrific, all right, good. Oh, and some of these we're gonna to touch upon today. All right, so again, we're just gonna be looking at a snapshot. Again, like I picked, let's say like, I don't know, half a dozen songs and we're gonna look at them. We could easily, everyone in this group could have picked half a dozen and we would have had equally an amazing presentation, but we'll uh, we'll go for it. Okay, Lori, please. And I, and I please. think we're gonna, yeah. uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're gonna end on a pretty uh, neat song too at the very end, so let's not, right? But we've got- Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Exactly, that's true, okay. So here's a, here's a, when you think about Israeli music that reflects a little bit about the culture and identity of Israel, one song quickly came to mind. Okay, so Lori, one more. 
Okay, so this is a picture of just like a regular car in Israel, right? Um, hopefully you can see that. It doesn't matter if you know Hebrew or not, you can tell that what's on the car is an array of different bumper stickers. And this is very common. Israelis have their opinions. We know that Jews have their opinions for sure. Israelis, so, so much. They have their opinions. They are, str they are strongly held opinions and they're all over bumper stickers, right? They are, it's just something that is very, very common. So a number of years ago, um, yeah, close to 20 years ago at this point, um, uh, David, yeah, Lori, just go one more. Okay, so very highly, highly acclaimed, celebrated author, one more, Lori. Uh, uh, no, no, think of it there, it's fine. David Grossman, who is the, uh, the person on your left, highly acclaimed author. Um, many of his books are out in English, highly, highly recommend. He is award-winning. His, his books are like very, very, just great literature was just mesmerized by the amount and the breadth of bumper stickers that are just all over cars, just touching on opinions relating to politics and religion and social issues, et cetera. And kind of put together like this like big poem that he was just like kind of wandering around. It was like, all right, let me just see what, where are these, you know, all these different, um, you know, all these different bumper stickers going. And he kind of saw like patterns sometimes or things that would be juxtaposed, whether it's people of different areas, et cetera. And he turned to this band called Dag Nachash. So Dag Nachash is the band on your, uh, on the right. Laurie, if you could just one more click. This is their nice little, um, very respectful uh, logo, right? Uh, in the bottom right, this is Dag Nachash. And he turned to them and said, you know, I don't know what we're gonna, what we could do with this, but I've come up with this, you know, this, this kind of big like ballad of, of all of these bumper stickers. And what, what, what could you kind of do with it? Could we, could we put this to music? So this was in 2004. And I just want you to like a collaboration of like this, like David Grossman and Dag Nachash, you know, it's kind of like Maya Angelou, you know, turning to like, I don't know, like Eminem and saying, hey, why don't we come up together with a collaborative artistic project? Like it's, it's, it's highly unusual. And they came up with a song called a Shirat HaSticker, sticker song that, um, uh, let's see. Okay, so Lori, I'm going to share now my screen. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we could do this, Lori. I think we can. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Okay, great. So if you have the short sheet in front of you, it is the first page. So we're just going to look at this very quick. We're not going to go through it line by line. And we're going to hear a few snippets of the song. So if you just look at this long list, it basically is showing, again, this wide range of where people are standing, whether it has to do with um, where Israel is in certain pieces of territory, whether um, Israel should be you know, directed by halakha, by Jewish law, um, animal rights, you know, what should we, you know, how should Israel be um, you know, dealing with animals, et cetera. So it's th this whole song is just one bumper sticker after another. And what's very nice about this short sheet is that on here, the bottom, right after the song, it actually explains to you what all the different, um, what all mm. the different uh, bumper stickers are. So Danny, why don't we play a little snippet of that? All right. Let's do it. Okay. So wait, sorry, hang on one sec. I just realized I have to share my screen in a way that everybody can hear. Okay. Yep. That's all set. Okay, great. All right. All right. Oh, <laughs> 
אנחנו קנאים, לך ימותו הקנאים. כמה רוע, כמה רוע, רוע, אפשר לבלוע, אפשר לבלוע, לא, לא, אבא תרחם, אבא תרחם. קוראים לי נחמן ואני מגר, מגר. Danny, you think that's a good snippet or? Uh, I think continue? we got it. I think we got it too. Okay. Great. Let me go here. Stop share. Okay. Terrific. Okay. So, um, you know, it definitely like pushes the envelope a little. All of those characters, they're actually members of the band that are kind of like taking different personas. You know, they're poking fun a little bit at themselves. Like, you know, yeah, we get into it. Um, but it's just like, it's, it's really like, it's embracing who they are. And this was just... It got such wide acclaim. Um, it was written up in the Times. This, I mean, the song is from 2004. I saw some people in the chat like, oh, I know that song. I love it, et cetera. So, um, you know, it seems like you know, you know it well as well. But to me, that's just like kind of that quintessential song of saying like, let's just own who we are. We have this wide breadth. Like there's not, Israelis are not a monolithic people, right? We are all over the place in terms of our opinions, our viewpoints, et cetera. And uh, the link is in the source sheet that Westchester Jewish Council sent earlier today. So you will have that. Okay, great. Uh, yes, Deborah, absolutely. A, def a definite cultural touch on. Okay, uh, touchstone. Um, all right, so Lori, let's continue. What do we have next here? Uh, can I move this in here? All right, what do we have next, Lori? What's the next slide? Let's see. Okay, great. So let's see in the chat, anyone recognize like what is this, where is this in Israel and approximately when? Okay, let's see if we see anything in the chat. What are people saying? Old city, Jerusalem, yep, you got it. Okay, uh, it's even a little later. This, from what I understand, was actually um, right before the reunification of Jerusalem. So we're talking like 66, 67, okay? Right. So that's when that is. And when you think of 1967, Jerusalem, anything come to mind? Does anything come to mind? We're, again, we're in a session about song, about music. I'll give you a little hint, Lori. Click one more. Let's give everyone a little hint. Avir Harim. Okay, so we got, yep, Naomi Shemer, excellent. Okay, let's show her picture, Lori. One more. Okay, great. Do, right, so Jerusalem of gold, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav. So, there's an amazing story about, um, you know, Nomi Shemer and um, Shuli Natan, who actually was selected to sing this young woman with a voice like a crystal ball, like a, I don't know what the amazing word, but uh, Shuli Natan sang it. Um, and it really was just something like to lift the morale. It was a beautiful song. Anyone here who's been to youth movement, Jewish camp, uh, Jewish, anything in their like childhood or teens, I'm sure that you sang the song and, and has to, you know, to memory so much of that song. So another song was written right around this time, um, also about Jerusalem, that is not as well known. Typically, I'll be, I'll be very shocked if people know it here, that's fine, but it's not as typically well known um, amongst Jews in the diaspora. So Lori, one more, click. Great, okay, Jerusalem Shell, right? So there's two, that, that's purposeful. Right. So Lori, there's one more. Okay, so there is a very, very talented song, and he actually died a number of years ago, um, uh, as a young man, I don't even know if he was 60, um, by Mayor Ariel, okay? So Mayor Ariel, or we'll look at his picture. Um, you may or may not recognize who he is, um, but Mayor Ariel was one of, Lori, your turn to click, was one of the Tzan Hanim, was one of the paratroopers that, um, that helped, you know, kind of enter the, uh, the old city. So really saw, was just like right there in the thick of it. And he penned a just song. Just to be clear, just to be clear, but he, he's not one of the individuals in the famous photo. Uh, but, Thank but you, he Danny. Was, but he, but he was part of uh, the battle for Jerusalem. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And um, if anyone wants to read more about Mayor Ariel's life, um, actually, in um, uh, Yossi Klein Halevi's book, like Dreamers, he is one of the paratroopers that is highlighted. One of the five, you know, that uh, that are profiled. So. You can read more about his life there. So that's amazing. So Mayor Ariel took the same music that Nomi Shemer wrote for Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, and he penned a song called Yerushalayim Shel Barzel, Yerushalayim of Iron. Now, if you have your source sheet, I think it's down on like page, uh, let's see, it's pretty far down. Uh, oh, not that far down. Uh, 
let's see. Up uh, here we go. Yeah, it's on the it's on page eight. Okay, so um, it's on page eight, and it's I really really highly recommend you know to to check out these lyrics and look. And he basically is, you know, it, it, he is a common household name in Israel. Like even those who are like not so well versed in song. You just say Mayor Ariel, they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, Yerushalayim Shel Barzel. It is a very, very well-known song. And it really just gives an insight to like, an, um, you know, kind of the brutality of war and just saying like, not knocking down Nomi Shemer's piece, which is just beautiful, but saying, you know, there's this gorgeous concept of the victory and the reunification of Jerusalem and how we are, you know, the Jewish people are back in the old city and et cetera, but there's an, a big price to pay and it's not, it's not something that we should be losing or burying or forgetting about. And, um, you know, this song was very, very well played, not so much in the diaspora, but it's definitely a song that, uh, that you should know about. So, um, Danny, I don't think we're gonna play that song right now. We'll see how we're doing with time and maybe we'll go back I think later. you can, uh, I, th I, think, I think we're okay. I think you can play just a, a snippet from it because I think for those people who hear it, it it's very striking that it's a different set of lyrics and uh okay so if you can you can hit it i mean I, I i i say it's a go okay so you know what yeah here's what i'm going to do then i am going to see if i can share my screen here and let's see if it goes okay ready here we go share sound okay uh can people see this is that is it audible yes. danny yes okay you recognize the tune. Oh, yeah. Mikol Margem Otav Ravino, Veshachar Kambit Om, Burak Allah Otlo Hilbin, who Uchvar Haya Adam, Yerushalayim Shel Barzel. Veshel Oferet, Veshel Shkor, Halo Lechom Otayich, Karanu Dror. Yerushalayim, Shel Barzel, Veshel Oferet, Veshel Shkor, Halo Lechom Otayich, Karanu Danny, what do you think? A little more? Or oh, no, I, I, I think that covers it. That's a very powerful um, juxtaposition with Naomi Shimmer's song and a reminder that real, real people experienced real things in those days. Um, yeah. And uh, um, it, 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 it's, I think, one of the best pieces of today's session, quite frankly. And I encourage everybody to listen to it. It's quite powerful. And, and well regarded in Israel, of course. Yeah. And you know, Danny, it's also like a very summary thing. Like when we think about things that holidays that we learn about, like, you know, Yom Yerushalayim, like, yes, we are celebrating, you know, the reunification of Jerusalem, et cetera. But yes, there's a heavy price to pay. And there's so many complications, even mod like just there's complications. It's nothing is just like a simple, right? Right. You know, glory thing. Okay, great. Oh, Lori, you're such an amazing partner. Okay, if you could proceed to the <laughs> next one, Lori. Okay, great. So now we have some audience participation. So we know that the United States is not part of Eurovision. I know, like, it's hard to believe we're not part of it. So many countries outside of Europe are, like Australia is, I don't know, go figure, but we are not part of it. But Israel is, and we know that as American Jews, that's like our other home. So I'm sure we follow, you know, like, what are the victories and what are our nominations and things like that. So let's see in the chat, Be that would be fascinating to see. Um, how many people know how many times so far, right? Because it's still going on. How many times so far has Israel won first place at Eurovision? So let's see what we got here. Okay. All right. We got a ones. We got a four. Let's see. Any other guesses? There's no uh, no problem if you don't, uh, if you guess wrong. Any other guesses? Let's see. Oh, hey, Marla. Great to see you. Marla is my colleague in Westchester, four, five, okay. All right, so we got some good guesses here. So let's see, Lori, if you could press the magic button, four. That is how many times that Israel's won Eurovision. And we're bringing in some, we're gonna look at some of the, um, some of the winning songs of Eurovision and some songs that were not. 
because this also gives great insight into a lot of who Israel, Israel is. So I love the idea that someone said five because it's very aspirational. Like maybe we're already looking at 2022 or you know things like that or where we're going on, we're on a good roll. But uh, four is is the number. Okay, so let's look a little bit about um, you know where we are. Okay, so Lori, so it's okay if you don't remember this was a long time ago, right? So 1978. Yes, we'll get to toy. We're not there yet. We're going to start in the beginning. Okay, so Israel won Israel's first um, first victory, right? Was Izhar Cohen and Alpha Beta, and it was really this like light funk song, which I I'll, I'll just take my crack at singing it, but I feel like any of us who went to camp. Right, like Abani Bia Bohabe. Right, did, did, who else? Who else? Come on, who else sang that song? I think we could all like take ourselves off mute. Yeah, we all know that song, which is really just like it's kind of like how kids here do like you know fee fi fo fa be like it's just adding in these letters into like I love you. It's just like a fun, cute song, made first place. It was incredible. Okay, so that was 1978. Is our is is our Cohen and Alphabeta? Laurie, next one. And then we had Milk and Honey with Hallelujah. Again, a very beautiful light song just about like the beauty of the world and things we should be appreciative of like Hallel, et cetera, um, the next year. So Israel's on a great roll, 1979. All right, then we had a bit of a hiatus, bit of a hiatus. And then in 1998, Dana International. Okay, Dana International won with Viva. Okay, so this was like close to, this was 19 years of not winning first prize. We got there. And then uh, just a few years, well, actually a number of years later, right? 2018, Lori, we'll get to our fourth and final winner and some, uh, Netta Barzilai with Toy. Okay, so this was pretty amazing. It's no small feat. Not every country has won four victories, right? Of, of first place. Um, and just a few things like here to underscore, and then I want to share something else actually about uh, about Eurovision. So one, you know, um, these are original songs that you know that countries, uh, you know, they they put someone at fourth who are going to represent them, etc. So I want to look for a second at Donna International, why that is something that is so reflective, I think, of like Israeli identity and culture. So remember, this was 1998. This was quite a while ago, and. If you were to say something about Donna International, like you could put it in the chat. I wish we were all in person because we could just like call on people quickly. But I'm just going to share my impressions. Like I see this performer in front of me who is just like, she is just this, she is stunning. She is all like, you know, just look at her. She's a glamour. gorgeous voice. Glamour. Glamour. Gla glamour. There is glamour. You should see there was a different dress that she wore, that Donna International wore for the, you know, for the actual presentation and she's this, and you should see her in motion, like just go YouTube something. It's just incredible. Um, and Donna International is a trans, is a, is a trans uh, performer. Donna International was born in Israel to a Mizrahi family and um, came out, identified um, as a female um, in, her early in her early teen years. Um, and again, this was in 1998, okay? So this was years before us in the US, this was years before we um, in the United States, it was years before we repealed the don't, don't ask, don't tell in the military, right? So like, you know, there was no um, open, you know, in the, in the US military, there was no open. I mean, she, Donna International like was well, well ahead of her time. Now, I don't wanna gloss over like how simple that was. Was there protests? from you know, religious in Israel about Don International representing Israel? Absolutely. Was everyone on board with it? No. Did every you know, individual public or political party or religious faction think this was the best choice? No, but it was, and it won first place. And again, like well before gay marriage was legal here, well before you know, different pronouns have been accepted in public schools usage here, like, it's just an amazing, um, I think it's just really amazing. And um, Danny, I know that you and I were just speaking a little bit about Eurovision, but a few years ago, like how this might've influenced other things, I'm just gonna mm. kind of preempt that, is that several years ago, um, a transgender um, performer from Austria actually won first place in, um, in, uh, in Eurovision. Mm. Oh. 
Um, and let me see if I can do that. People might know her as, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna, Lori, I think I'm just gonna share quickly my, no, we'll do that later, we'll do it later. But she, I, I'm sorry, actually, I don't know the pronouns that uh, the performer in Austria uses, but this performer credits Donna International for paving the way for, for this performer to, you know, to, to perform and, and really embrace her, uh, you know, her, her gender identification, et cetera. So it's just an amazing, uh, amazing. Yeah, that's story. very interesting. Yeah. Um, and also, um, actually, Eurovision now has become like a really accepted place for LGBTQ um, people to just like embrace the frivolity and the glamour and just like the all out like wonderful sportsmanship competition in, uh, you know, in, in, um, in music performance. It's become like uh, she really helped pave the way there. So yay, Don International. And also, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to put any shade on Netta, that her song also has wonderful messages as well. It seems just like kind of a cool little hip hop song, but her, you should look, we'll look at the lyrics another time of, I think of, uh, of her song, who really is, um, you know, making sure that all women are getting the type of respect that they deserve, you know, from their romantic partners. That's, it, it seems like a little just light song, but the message is, is, is quite strong. Right. Okay. Um, Let's look at one other uh, one other uh, connection, Danny, of Israeli song and Eurovision, because I think it's also really it, it, it's quite meaningful. So, Laurie, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, great. Okay, I love, so I love this. Yeah. Okay, so this is the Shalva Band. Okay, so who is the Shalva Band? The Shalva Band. It's um, it's a musical band consists of um, eight musicians who all live with some degree of disability. Um, they, this band was formed in 2005 at the Shalva organization. It's an organization in Israel. And this organization empowers and supports individuals and their families who have disabilities. It's an Israeli organization. And what's been happening the past, you know, sorry, I don't know exactly the number of years, but um, the process to select a, um, a performer or band that represents Israel has changed. It used to be kind of just like a, um, you know, maybe like a like a like a little uh, contest. And now performers are invited to go to Kohav Haba. It's kind of like a reality show, maybe similar to like like The Voice or American Idol. So Kohav Haba literally means the star that's coming forth, like the, the next star that's coming. And the Israeli public is voting for, you know, for, uh, for who their pick should be. So there are judges and they give good feedback and they share their opinion, just like all good musical reality shows. So what was happening in the winter of 2019 is like, I mean, all of Israel was just on their seats. Like you had like the top, top glam, you know, like the top billing performers. And then this group from the Shalva band who like they're amazing individuals, but you know, let's just objectively say like they don't have, let's say like this, you know, this glamor of like, you know, uh, like Don International or uh, or Eden, you know, et cetera, um, you know, or the panache of, of Netta. And bit by bit, they were making it past like the first round, the second round, the third round, et cetera. And the Shalva band made it to the finals. And at the end of the day, like they just captured the heart of the, of the um, not just of the, uh, of the judges, but the Israeli public. And they were voted to represent Israel in the 2019 Eurovision. So an, an amazing to me. We're gonna we're gonna play Danny a snippet of them because I want to oh, yeah. actually underscore it wasn't like a sympathy vote. It wasn't like Israel the public was saying, like, oh yeah, you know, we feel bad for them. Like they're an amazingly talented band. Yeah, anyone and, who hasn't heard of them, we're play a little piece now and you judge for yourselves. Yeah, uh, the just there. A, an amazing, amazing thing. So um let me play a snippet and then I'm gonna explain why um why actually they did not uh, do that. Okay. So let me do, let me share this. Okay, and Shava Band, where is Shava? Whoops. Sorry, hang on. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, and then we have the other 20 ones. Okay. Is it, can you hear it? Yes, yes. Okay. They're amazing. You have to just. Shalva Zamta, Shikama. לילדים עם צרכים מיוחדים, המוזיקה בעצם יוצרת להם קשר מדהים בעולם ויכולת לבטא את עצמם בצורה אחרת. 
Those are the judges on Kilpapapa. That's the director of the Shabu organization. שיש לנו זכות ענקית, ענקית, שאתם אצלנו בתוכנית. פשוט זכות ענקית בשביל המסר הוא כל כך חזק והוא כל כך חשוב אה, שהוא יהיה בפריים טיים, וזו פשוט זכות שהוא אצלנו בתוכנית. תודה רבה. להקת שלווה, יש בכם הכל. אתם מרגשים, אתם מעוררי השראה. אתם כל כך מוכשרים, שאנחנו נהיה כל כך גאים אם אתם תייצגו אותנו. אתם עשיתם פה משהו ענק, באומץ גדול, באתם ביחד, והראיתם שאפשר אחרת. אתם מכניסים אהבה ואור, ואל תפסיקו לעשות Listen to their vocals, unbelievable. Okay, amazing, right? It just, like, wow, what an incredible, uh, incredible band. So here's the, the end of this, is that although they were voted, by the judges, you could see all adore them and the public all, you know, voted for them. They ended up not, um, not representing Israel in 2019. Israel ended up sending someone else because Eurovision is performed on Saturday night. And the rehearsals and sound checks and, you know, all the preparation happens all day, the day, you know, the day of the performances of that night, which is on Shabbat. And the group is mixed. They are comprised of both religious and non-religious members. And they felt that they would not do, they would not, all of the options open to them would just not work. They didn't want to break the band up and, you know, substitute for other people. Right. They didn't want to miss the sound check and the rehearsals because that could put them at a disadvantage. And they didn't want to go against, and they didn't want to pressure any of the band members to go against their religious convictions and practice to, uh, you know, to actually partake. So they decided as a group that they had to withdraw. So they did not end up uh, representing Israel in 2019, but had it been any other you know, day of the week, they would have done it. So to me, this is just like layer upon layer of representing Israel. One, you know, just like the heart and soul of, of Israel, right? It's not only um, you know, like the glamour or the you know, something of like a Netta or a Donna International, but like we do, we have like such a heart and a soul. I mean, you saw these amazing judges who are like models and performers, et cetera, how they truly, truly loved all of them. And, um, and then how this band just addressed all the complications because being part of a Jewish people and a Jewish state and being part, you know, uh, participating in the rest of the world also, you know, comes with some interesting complications or let's say opportunities for us, you know? So, because right. I think it was, it was a really amazing opportunity, Danny, not just, you know, to say we had to withdraw because it was a problem, but I think it really strengthened, you know, their own understanding of their identity and who they are as a group and as, um, you know, an organization. So yeah, they almost represented Israel, yeah. Um, okay, any, how are we doing, Danny? Any questions? Did anyone want to see, like, you think you want to do, like, a little clip of any of the other songs from Eurovision, or should we uh, proceed and then see if we have time? Well, let's see if we have time at the end. We've got some other interesting uh, bits do, here do. that I think we ought to get to, and we're doing okay on time, so let's keep Okay, going. excellent, great. Okay, so, Lori, I'm going to ask, please, if you could continue. Right, well, I want to say here? a shout-out to Debbie Margolis. Hi, Debbie. Okay, Lori, let's see what the next, I don't remember what I, what is this was. Ah, great, great, great. Okay, great. Okay, so here is a great song. Okay, Lori, one more, so we'll just see who he is. Okay, so who is Amir Gilboa? It, it's okay, it's not such a household name, so no, 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 uh, uh, no judgment if everyone doesn't know who he is. So Amir Gilboa came to what was Palestine as Beryl Feldman uh, from, uh, from Ukraine, uh, probably like in the 20s. 
And in what we think of the 40s, actually not everybody knows. Um, here, I'm gonna see about opening this up a little bit. I do wanna see it. Um, and he penned a poem, um, this is before the state, just about like, it's, it's called the Song of the Morning, uh, Shirat Baboker uh, Baboker. So you're gonna know it by, a, I really feel like you're gonna know it <laughs> by a, uh, you're gonna know it by something different. So a number of years later, like 30 something years later, Laurie, if you could continue, this poem gets put to music, okay, by Shlomo Artsy. Two more, Laurie. Great. Okay, so Shlomo Artsy puts this song to music. One more. Great. Okay, so that was uh, Shlomo Artsy, the big one in the, in the 70s, but then um, a little bit later. Okay, so da, 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 I just want to put this here. And sorry, I'm getting. Sorry. Oh, I can't find the song. Let's see. Nope, that's his song. Okay, four more seconds and then I'll get it. Let's see. All right, got it. Okay. So, um, Lori, I'm just going to share my screen for a sec, okay? Okay. All right. So, share screen. Sorry, everyone. Thanks. Okay, great. All right. Can you all see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So here, this is on your shore sheet. It's on uh, page nine. Okay, so here is Amir Gilboa and Shlomo Artsy and Giddy Korn wrote the music a number of years later. And we're gonna look at two different versions of the song in a second, which I think are really amazing. So if you look at the lyrics of the, the well, lyrics or the, the words of this poem, I don't know what comes to your mind, but it's like he, you know, you see like Amir Gilboa, who, who changed his name, which was so common, right, for the Halutzim, like for pioneers who came and also anyone who, you know, worked for Israel, right, you know, he was Beryl Feldman and then became Amir Gilboa, like something so different, but right. it's all about like the, the um, you know, the, the amazing aspects of the land of Israel, right, the corn stalks and the lilac trees and the dew drops, like, He's just so mesmerized by the vitality, you know, of the land of Israel, right? Like it all just comes out, like, look at this, like, you know, the mountains and the, um, you know, you could just see here, like the tree is turning green, et cetera. It's just like really amazing. Okay. And let's hear what, um, let's hear, hold on. Doo, doo, doo. We're going to get to this. Shlomo Artsy. No, before we get to that one, here we go. Yeah. Okay, so here is Shlomo Artsy. Sorry, this is Shlomo Artsy, like who made this song famous. And now you're going to know what this song is because I, I know yeah. you might not have known Gilboa's uh, poem, but you'll know this. Okay, Danny, I think I just wanted to give like a little snippet there. Oh yeah, okay? oh, yeah. now let's let's uh, let's hit the 2011. Yeah. So now, okay. So hang on one second. Okay, so now in two, just racing up a little bit more in 2011, okay, I don't know, like if you remember kind of what's going on in Israel, but demonstrations just erupt in the summer of 2011, okay? Um, there are tents, what's called like tent city, like tents are posted all over Tel Aviv. Um, the public is protesting an incredible high cost of living. Um, also issues that have to do with corruption in the government. Um, and social justice. So this is, it's a while ago, 2011, but the country is just, you know, a, a lot of fiery things are coming up. And this song makes a re, it becomes like it reemerges. And the first lines of the song is like, what is underscored? So like in the beginning, like Amil Gerbo is talking about like, oh, this, a person wakes up, piton kamadam. Suddenly a man wakes up, vuhu margish ka'an. He feels like a people. And there's so much that's focused on the vitality and the, you know, the, the beauty of the land. And it kind of gets, it turns a little bit on its head. And what is underscored in 2011 is feeling like a people and the people that are united and they are like, you know, kind of demonstrating together against 
things that are really like affecting the entire public. So Danny will look at, let us hmm, share screen, hold on. Yep, okay, so let's look at this, let's look at this now. Okay, and great, okay. Oh wait, it's a lot later, sorry, I realized. I think it's like around here. There you go, there you go. Yeah, okay. Sorry, okay, here. Older, but still amazing. Okay. So, Danny, I just wanted to play that one snippet there. It's an iconic it's, song. It's an iconic song and has, has a lot of uh, uh, meaning. And I, you know, I consider myself fairly knowledgeable and well-versed and did not know the history uh, of the lyrics. It's fantastic. Yeah. Nor, nor did I actually ever truly pay close attention to them. So I, this is great. Fantastic. Yeah. And it became, it became like the song of the social protests of 2011. So amazing. it's also amazing, like the song that was really just used to like embrace the beauty of the land and then it became about a people. And that I think a goal goes to Israel because we are a people with a land, right? There's a place and there's okay. a people and it uh, and it goes together. Yeah. Uh, thumbs up to you, Marla. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, Lori, let's, um, let's see what we got next. Oh, okay. So we cannot do a, um, oh my God, we cannot do a, any sort of presentation about, um, about music without looking a little bit about Arik Einstein. Okay, so Arik Einstein, and I just, this is like a little bit of a Westchester. Oh, Lori, sorry, could you do one more? Sorry, thank you. Okay, okay, great, Lori, you're amazing. All right, so Arik Einstein died very, very prematurely uh, about nine years ago, uh, eight years ago. And I just wanna give a little Westchester um, anecdote to this. So he died at the age of 74, and he was one of Israel's most beloved songwriters and singers and he also had an amazing acting career not everybody knows that when he died tens of thousands of people uh, attended his his burial and um Gal Galatz, which is the army radio station that is really like that just like owns kind of all music they played his song his songs for 48 consecutive hours i mean he was just beloved so i just want to share like a little anecdote how this so I heard about his death early that morning. It was no, uh, November, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember the date, but it was November, 2013. And um, our first shaliach, Yoav Cohen, was in Westchester. So uh, mm -hmm. hopefully many of you remember that, our, our first shaliach there. And I went into the Westchester office that day. Um, and I, you know, I, I had heard early that morning that he, that, he, that he had died. And I thought, oh my God, like Yoav, I, I, Yoav is going to just, he's going to be beyond, he's going to be beside himself and he's in America and he's going to want to be in Israel. And he's just going to be like, my thoughts immediately went to Yoav. So I went into the office, I saw Yoav and we didn't even say anything like with real words, Danny. It was just like, he looked at me, I looked at him, I was like, and I was just like offering him condolences. And he was saying to me, like, I know it's so sad. And somebody else saw us like, oh my God, what happened? What happened? And we told them what, you know, who was our answer was or died and they, they didn't quite get it. You, you kind of had to like, you know, be in the know. But I remember just thinking, oh my God, Yoav Cohen, he's just going to feel like even more removed from Israel, you know, at that mm. point. Um, so here's one other thing about Einstein. Like he was just such a driving force in, and, and Danny, this is one of your points about we could do a semester course, like just on something else. Like this is a two semester course, like just on his career. <laughs> you know, and, and, and what he does. He had such, such, so like he has, you know, records of, ch of songs just for children and then records of songs just for adults. And like, it's just all over, but something about like Israeli identity that's amazing is um, he really embraced like being Israeli. And he was once asked like, oh, you know, you're going to Europe or you're performing in the States or you're, you know, you and your, you know, your colleagues, et cetera. What do you think about, performing in a different language. So here is what he had to say, Lori. It's really just uh, one more click, Lori. Sorry, two more, yeah. And he was just, so sorry. Oh, if you could, go back. Yeah, there you go, you got it, Lori, thank you. And he was indignant, he was like, what? Like, I'm not performing in English, like my English is fine, it's nothing to do with that. But like, you know, hey, we are Israelis, we are Hebrew artists, this is, the, this is our language and you know, we're not gonna pretend and just uh, sing another song, so. 
just want to share that. Like you can't do something, Danny, right, without a little bit of uh, art. Absolutely. I think you're going to have to pull out Eric Einstein's snippet here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's do that. Danny, I'm going to, um, uh, let's see. Call an audible here. And yeah, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen again. Do this. Okay, Lori, I'm taking the reins again. Yeah. Okay, great. And let's do, uh, oh, this is great. Okay, let's do this one. Okay. Sorry, this song, it doesn't, I could not find a version with, with uh, subtitles, I'm sorry, but- We'll forgive you. Danny, a little tongue in cheek, I felt like kind of with people so many in quarantine that this song would be, a little, <laughs> it's a little snarky everybody, sorry, but it's, I love to be at home. So <laughs> I just, uh, you know, you, you just talked about like the beauty of like, you know, going on hikes and traveling and doing this, but at the end of the day, you love to be at home. So Danny, I couldn't resist, okay. Beautiful. But all right, right, yeah. So you know, if, if you're Hebrew, if it's hard to pick up the Hebrew, and then again, I I could not find the lyric, I could not find the subtitle, so I do apologize for that. But um, if you could pick that up, he's like, you, you know, you can go all over, and there are people this, but I just love to be at home with my tea and lemon, and my old books, and my love, and that was just like a lot of Eric Einstein. Like he would come and perform, just like you see, you know, like button-down shirt, jeans. And just like a, a musical genius and actor, just a lava shalom. I mean, just amazing. Let's uh, let's move a pace here and get into some of the other uh, contemporaries that you've got uh, in our last, you know, little bit. Great. Okay. Excellent. All right. What do we have here, Lori? Ah. Okay. Great. All right. So switching great. a little bit here. Okay. So here we have um, this amazing band, um, Awa. Um, Awa. Uh, I think it means like yeah in uh, in Arabic. So here are three sisters, Ta'ir, Liron, and Tagel, Chaim. Uh, Lori, one more. Uh, this is where they're from. They're from a small, um, this small like town. I don't know if you'd call it a town. I, I don't even know if there are 80 people in where, they, where they're from. Oh, wow. Thank you, D Dina. Wow, she knows. Yeah. Okay. So um, they are three sisters. They're from, um, uh, their grandmother was Yemenite. And they grew up hearing uh, Yemenite songs and tradition, et cetera. And they really embraced it. They're very, they're very hip. They come from a family that is pretty religious. They're traditional religious, and they have not shed that, you know, in their um, in their lifestyle, etc. You can see they embrace their, you know, like the Yemenite costumes, um, you know, the um, you know the dresses, etc. And every time you see them perform, I've actually saw them in person in Brooklyn. It was one of the most amazing experiences. Um, I was like singing and dancing with like hipsters and Haredim. In this, in like in this same club in in Brooklyn, like watching these three sisters, they are highly, highly celebrated both in in Israel and also in Europe. They have this big following in northern in in Europe, in uh, in the states, etc. So they're from this town that's like it's not a it's like well south of Beersheba, north of a lot. This this tiny little place, and um, uh, they 
yeah. So you know, Danny, let me. I'm gonna. I want to share uh, a little snippet of their song, and I want to show the lyric because that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, um, yeah. Let's it. fire it up. Beautiful. Okay. Share screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ella, where are they? Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Okay. So watch how you could see like they're they're very modern tip rubbery, and yet they also are very very loyal and true to like who they you know define themselves. This kind of uh, hold on, let me stop sharing for a second. The words, the lyrics to this are really um, are, are really very telling. And you know, here is this group that again they're hip and they have this great following, etc. And they're not shy in their lyrics. They're sharing some really harsh realities that their family and it's not their family. A lot of immigrants from Yemen, from Yemen, and from other Mizrahi countries experience when they came to Israel, right? So they talk about, you know, you kind of see the beginning of the song, Danny, and you think, oh, it's like a Tuba Shvat song. It's a land of like figs and olives and it's nice things. And then they talk about like, yeah, you'll have a home, it's gonna be in a tent. And they're talking about the Ma'abarot that many, many immigrants who came from right. Morocco and Yemen, et cetera, had to live in for quite a while, while, you know, immigrants, Jewish immigrants from other countries were in apartment buildings, et cetera. Um, you know, a little bit of a nod to like the whole scandal of, of Yemenite babies being taken away. We make sure they don't take your daughter. Oh, you know, you're going to work, you'll be able to work the land. You might get a job in cleaning or in agriculture. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that comes out in this song, not, not all of their, you know, the songs of the history, but they are kind of putting out there. Yep. There's a difficult history of like, you know, Mizrahi in, uh, you know, in Israel and, you know, we're going to make a great hip song about it, but that's part there. Um, Danny, All how right, are we doing? We've got, we're, we're, we're okay. I'm going to give you 30 seconds on, uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name on, uh, Hanan Ben Ari. Right. Okay. And then we're going to, and then we're going to finish up with, with the song. uh, Katan, uh, Oh, then we'll do Katan Alenu. Okay. We'll, right. we'll add to that. Okay, great. So Lori, if you could go one more. Okay. So Hanan Ben Ari. Great. So Hanan Ben Ari is, uh, wow, all right. So Hanan Ben-Ari, um, uh, born in what, whatever you want to say, uh, uh, Samaria, West Bank, and a place called Karnei Shomron, grew up Orthodox, went to religious schools, heavily influenced by his father who was a cantor, right? And his songs are often um, speaking about like religious concerns uh, in an open perspective. Um, he is one of Israel's most prominent, prominent singers religious, married with five children. One more, Lori. This is Hanan ben -Ari with his family. And um, please, please, please go to the link where you can see his amazing song called Wikipedia, which is about saying you cannot classify all Israelis. Like, yes, there's all these stereotypes. If you're religious, you're this. Or if you're left wing or if you're right wing, you know, there's so many ways that Israelis like to say, oh, I'm going to put you in this thing. But look at that song, Wikipedia, where he is saying, please don't, you know, don't smush us all in, in one place. I love that. And um, uh, let's see, Dan, Danny, maybe we should end with uh, Katana Lenu. How do you think? Sure, let's end with Katana Lenu. Okay, excellent. Give it, its, so, give it a little intro. I think it's a, an appropriate uh, ending. And while you're pulling that up, I want to say smashing. 
Uh, fantastic job. Amazing. I loved it. Oh, excellent. And um, uh, I'm, I'm ready for an encore. Woo! I think we should do part two, right? Okay. <laughs> exactly. Where's Katana Lane? Okay, so here's Katana Lane. Great, which um, was put together. Whoops. All right. Hang on. Okay, Katana Leno, just in a few seconds, Katana Leno was put together last year, like just as like maybe vaccines were getting started, but like just like a more, you know, terrible height of the pandemic, a collaboration of Israel's top artists. And I want to say we're talking Israeli Jews, Israeli Arabs, just like top, top artists, people who are, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, people who are 61, 62, like, you know, Giddy Go, along with Eden, et cetera. And Katana Leno is basically, we got this, like this is small, we can do this, we can overcome. And it just really captured, I think, like just so much of, um, you know, of the heart of soul of Israeli saying, we've been through worse, we could do it, we're going to get through this together. And Danny, we're just going to play the song as we also get on top of the challenges that are facing us. Indeed. And I think we're just going to let this play out for those of you who want to stick around, but um, that'll be it. This will be the way we end it. And I think it's a perfect way to end. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Westchester Jewish Council. Thank you, Thank Danny. You, this Abby. has been amazing. Thank you, Abby. Toda, toda and okay. stay tuned for our next events. Eretz el Shemesh Al ayam atichon Agalim po lo shketim Ze omer amon Vechol shel nengel Veada chemor Bait cham Vo kulam omrim shalom מול כל מכשול וכל חידה, עוד תקוותנו לא עבדה. מה יוליד יום זאת לא נדעה, ועל הכל נאמר תודה. כמו שהיה, ככה יהיה, עברנו הכל, נעבור גם את זה. לא יפלו פנינו, זה קטן עלינו. כמו שהיה... לא יפלו פנינו, זה קטן עלינו. קפה במרפסת, ריחות של שבת. איך כולנו פה אותו דבר כמעט? לשמור על זה קטן עלינו, הצרה היא מינימלית עם אחד כולם מעורבבים כמו כימיקלית עובדים משמונה עד חמש אבל חולמים דולרים סוף שבוע ממלאים מועדונים ופאבים זה לא חלום הבדיחה, יש לנו גם משפחה יחד איתי ואיתך, כולם ינשמו לרווחה יש לנו לב וגם יש לנו שכל וכוח רצון וטיפה של מזל כולנו אש, אין לנו פחד ככה בטוח יהיה לנו קל מול כל מכשול וכל חידה, עוד תקוותנו לא עבדה. מה יוליד יום זאת לא נדע, ועל הכל נאמר תודה. כמו שהיה, ככה יהיה, עברנו הכל, נעבור גם את זה. לא יפלו פנינו, זה קטן.
עברנו הכל, נעבור גם את זה. כן. לא יפלו פנינו. לא יפלו. זה קטן That's just great. That's great. Thank you all. Thank you. That was great. Thanks. Okay.